Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Today I wanted to talk to you about converting this Milwaukee Fuel Framing Nailer from a 30 degree to a 21 degree. And why would you want to do that? Well, so you can see here the difference in nails, just for a quick example. And I have different nails here. These are the 30 degree paper tape nails. These are the 21 degree plastic ones. And so I have a lot of these nails and a lot of these nails. And instead of buying a whole new gun, I just bought a new extended capacity magazine, which just was about 90 bucks. You can get them for, and I'll have a link down in the video description if you want to check out where I got mine. But you can do that, and then you can just swap them out. Just a couple bolts if you, you know, you don't want to do it every day, but if you got like some nails to use up that are 21 degree, and you got some nails to use up that are 30 degree, why not just do this instead of buying a whole new gun for 300 bucks? That's what my thoughts were. So if you guys want to know how to convert it, I'll show you a little later in this video. It just requires doing a little bit of filing on the top right up here. I'll show you how to do that. They just offset these notches a little bit. It's pretty easy, so let's get started. So first, of course, I'm going to show you that this is the 30 degree nailer. You can see I got some pass load nails in here. So I'm going to show you really quick what I'm using. These are just three inch pass load framing nails. So I'm going to do this before I actually convert it over. Okay, so that one I didn't shoot it quite right, but you can see it's working like it should. Now the next thing I'm going to do, remove the battery so it turns it off. I'm going to take the nails out of it. And then this has an Allen wrench on storage here on the nailer. So I'm going to remove this. There's a screw right here that you have to remove. See down in here. And then you also have to remove these two right here on the nose. All right, now as you can see, this just came off once I took it loose. So it sits just like this, and this one comes off just like this. Then what I wanted to show you is I got this 21 degree. This is the extended capacity one. This is the only one I could buy separately. But so it's really big. You can see how much longer it is than this one. I'm almost too close here to show you the whole thing, but it takes a whole nother strip of nails. And so what I want to show you is now this one, it goes on here, but the only difference, I'll try to show this here the best I can, but basically what the difference comes in is see how these bumps right here and these bumps right here, these ones are further up than what these ones are. So I'll try to explain this a little bit better. So this is the original, this is the 30 degree one. And you can see this right here is the bump that I was talking about. See how it slides right into that notch right there? And you see that? So what the difference is on this one, so you can see it goes into place right here and here. But what the difference is here, see how for these ones, if I want these bolts here to line up, that's what the problem is, is to put these bolts back in. These ones here, want to come up above this. I'm gonna to try to line this up a little better to show you. Okay, now you can see the difference. See the offset there? So I have my bolts pretty much lined up here. Well, not quite, right? Oh, well see, okay, so this can fit like that, but then the bolts don't line up. So in order to get the bolts to line up, this has to come up like this. Okay, so I got a little screwdriver here I'll try to point with to show it a little better than my fingers. So there's about an eighth inch offset right here. See that offset? So in order for the bolts to go through here and line up, this needs to be ground down right here. So I would say about an eighth inch. And it's not just on this side. So I'm gonna flip the nailer over and show you, but it's also on this side. See right there, see that eighth inch difference? So that's about exactly what it is, is an eighth inch offset. So this is a little less than an eighth inch tall but I'm gonna to try to take an eighth inch out of there. You can try with a grinder, a file, whatever you got on hand. So same on this part. So to see it from this part on, yeah, you just gotta take the little corner out of this one, a little bit corner out of this one. So this is one thing I'm gonna attempt. This is just a cheap little Wen half inch by 18 inch belt sander. So I'm gonna try that on there. Some people talked about using a Dremel tool. I don't have one, so I'm gonna attempt this and just to see how it goes. So it looks like it's working. It's getting there. I still have quite a bit to take off, but I'm gonna try to get right down flush with this. So for this experiment, I'm just using 80 grit sandpaper. That's what this came with. You can try with 
finer if you want or with coarser if you want, but 80 grit seemed like a pretty good one to start with. All right, so there's the first side. Got a little bit of dust on there. You can see I nicked this a little bit and I nicked over here just a little bit, but it's just with the sandpaper, but you can see I got it nice and flush there. So I'm gonna attempt the other side. And if you're worried about something like that, you know, when you're done, you could put a little Rust-Oleum on there, paint it if you know it's gonna fit. It's just a thought, but now I'm going to hit this side. All right, got this side done. You can see it's a little messy, but it's really not too bad with that little sander. All right, now the moment of truth, we got this ground down, as you can see right there. So I'm gonna to try to set this in here. Oh yeah, now that lines up. Okay, now see see what I did right there? That gives you a really uh, good visual of what that notch is all about. Let's see what the back side looks like. Okay, so you see right there, the bright shiny spot actually now is a little easier for you guys to see. Now this one is tight again, so I might have to take a little more off of there. I'll have to test it out, try to put the bolts in. This side looks like it has enough room. Okay, now I'm seeing that the gap here is a little bigger than what I would like. Oh, something wasn't seated quite right. Oh, now that I am snugging it up, check this out. I do have to take a little more off of this backside. Hopefully you can see that. It is still hitting here a little, and it's when I tried to snug these up a little bit, it made that go in. So it looks like I didn't quite take enough. See, now that can sit in properly, but I need to take a little more off this backside. So that's part of the process. I wanted to show you this in real time that you just have to test it out. What I'm going to do is finish disassembling this and grind a little more off that side. So on camera, it's probably a little hard for you to tell, but this is the back side before I do anything. And it is about an eighth inch that I took off. This side's a little bit tapered, but right down in there in that groove where it matters, it's about an eighth inch. On this side, well, it's about an eighth inch as well, I would say, that I took off. But it appears I need to take another sixteenth off of this side. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. All right, with my little sander, it is a little tricky to get in there. So I was trying to turn it sideways, try to get into that corner a little bit. Not sure if I took enough off, but I'm going to check it. Okay, so here's attempt number two. I'll show you the back side. This is the one where I took a little more off. Now see that gap? That's what it was doing last time when it was putting it in the bolt. It didn't want to suck this nice and tight, which it has to be. So now I'm going to attempt and see. I'm trying to do this left-handed so I don't block the camera. Ooh, I think it's going. All right, before I snug the other side, I'm going to get this one in. Oh man, I think it's going to work. See, this is nice and tight this time around. Got just enough clearance right there. All right, so I got those two back in. Got these two in. Checking it out, everything looks nice and tight. This gap right here especially. Then the same on the front. That's nice there, there's a little gap right there. But the bolts line up and everything lines up, so now we're gonna test it out. Don't forget to put your Allen wrench back when you're done. Always wanna keep that in case of jamming and everything else. Gonna put the battery back in. Turn it on, I'm gonna turn it on that mode. Now I have some strips of, I think they're two and a half inch or two and three quarter, and they're just 21 degree. All right, so it's loaded, ready to go. Seems to work great. I did have two dry fires, two misses, but I think that was just because of the these nails are a little bit messed up from transporting them. I brought them home in a tool bag. I'm gonna flip it over and try it with just one clip of nails in it. All right, so that was 10 nails and it didn't hesitate once. I think this clip was a little bit messed up and when I had two in there, it did that. I had to do a little more just for fun, but as you can see, I didn't hardly have any misfires. I did have one right here that didn't go all the way in and I had another one right there that bent over. Well, that one there's got like a 16th that needs to go yet. But otherwise, I wanted to just shoot a bunch in there. 
One thing I don't like about the plastic ones, 21 degree, is they leave such a mess. But that's what most people carry. That's one reason I wanted to convert over to the 21 degree and be able to shoot both. So man, this extended clip is really long, but it is nice that it can hold more nails. I like that fact. Sometimes these 21 degree plastic ones can get a little bit messed up. So like if they are offset a tiny bit in there, like see this one, I think that's what was happening last time to making it jam. They go a little bit beside each other like that. These plastic ones do. And I think that's why I had a couple of misfires on the first one. Cause once I took that clip out, I didn't have any problems at all. But yeah, so as you can see, it does work to convert your 30 degree to a 21 degree. People have wondered, what about warranty if you do something like this? Well, I didn't tell you this, but why not just hang on to your 30 degree? You're going to want it anyway, in case you want to use 30 degree nails, which is the purpose that I'm using it for. And then if you need warranty work done, just put this clip back on. It's only three bolts and you can have this one back on for warranty work. So the other question I thought of, if you guys are wondering, what if you have a 21 degree nailer and you're converting it to a 30 degree? I think you could just grind on the opposite side because it shifts the opposite way, I think. I'm not quite sure because I don't have a 21 degree nailer originally, but I think the same idea works. You just have to offset this notch a little bit differently. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching, guys.